Okay, so, um, yes, my name's Rhys Hickman. Um, I'm talking about a particular project we've just started in Manchester on the Open Research Forums. Um, and it's all about trying to have wider conversations around open research that go beyond basically compliance, to steal a, friend from a, a phrase from a colleague. So, yeah, a lot of this around getting beyond compliance. Uh, open research is obviously growing, and um, that's great, and it's really, the profile's quite high at Manchester, but a lot of the profile is around compliance messages. So for our open access team, obviously, that's Hefke and the REF. And for us, that's really been around data management plans. And Manchester was quite an early adopter with research data management, but it's very much focused on research data management plans, which... Um, whilst important and not always the sort of most exciting thing to really get researchers interested. Um, we were also interested in widening the debate. So um, I'm not sure what other people's experiences are, but my experience is often that you end up with a lot of the same people at events. So we wanted to try and create an event which would appeal to a wider range of people, not just those who are already persuaded of the benefits of open research. And um, as with many people, uh, I think almost everyone working in this area, resource is always an issue with for us, so we decided to work with our open access team to try and create a wider event so that we had a bit more people involved in putting it on. So um, what we came up with was something called the Open Research Forum. It's going to be a, it was a half-day event. Um, this is actually the Contact Theatre, which is a um, theatre for young artists, which is on the edge of the Manchester campus. So it's sort of close to where our researchers are, but it's not a staid university room where they feel that they have to be super formal. Um, and we decided this was the sort of uh, event that we wanted to run. We wanted something where researchers could feel relaxed and also feel free to challenge what was said. We felt it was really important that we didn't have another event where the library came in and said, this is what we think you should do. We wanted to hear from researchers about what they thought they should do and what their experiences of practicing openly were. So as I said, it's informal, uh, we had a, a lot of open discussion, we were encouraging speakers to be quite provocative. We wanted to put an emphasis on interdisciplinarity, and I have to give credit to um, Hardy from Lancaster here that I was very much inspired by their data conversations when we were putting together this event, um, and so it was interesting hearing him say this morning that they have had interdisciplinary kind of collaborations born at their data <coughs> conversations, because that was something that we recognised as a rather a large university with sort of four and a half, I'm going to get this wrong, four and a half thousand academic staff-ish and around 40,000 students. It's a very big university spread across two campuses, so an opportunity to get people together where they could work together was quite important. And as I said, we didn't want the library to be leading this, so we could recognise that we had the resource to put the programme together and we had the resource to do the sort of behind-the-scenes work but we wanted the researcher voice to be front and centre, and we wanted it to be a very personal tale from researchers. So um, instead of making kind of abstract moral or economic arguments around why people should be doing open research, we wanted to hear very personal tales from individuals about what practising openly had done for them, for their careers, or just sort of in their field. So um, this is kind of what we ended up with. We ended up with a really great range of speakers if I just go back, you can kind of see some of that there. We started off with uh, Professor Matthew Cobb, who's recently written a preprint about preprints. Um, <laughs> yeah, hard one to say uh, about how preprints started off in the 1960s and publishers tried to kill them. Um, we had then followed that with a PhD student. We had a sort of Q&A on stage as though they were in a sort of mini talk show between two researchers who blog together. Um, and that was uh, really interesting. And then we had a, a sort of Q&A with the audience, with the speaker facilitating a Q&A with the audience, talking about different approaches to discussing open research and the risks of being too evangelical about open research. Uh, and followed that with a, yeah, a few sort of more straightforward traditional talks in between. So we had really great speakers, and that's the sort of Q&A on the stage between two of our speakers. Um, and the range of formats worked really well. It meant that there was plenty of discussion, there was interactive elements, but also a chance for those who are less experienced to learn. Um, and the discussion was quite lively, particularly when we started talking about different approaches to advocating for open. Our speakers really took us at our word and were quite provocative in saying that they think some of what's done in this space isn't a good idea and that it isn't a good idea to tell researchers what to do too much. Um, what we were sort of disappointed by 
was um, the attendance. And I think, interestingly, again, talking about Hardy's talk, he said that they get 25 to 30 researchers, which was about the number that we had. It's just that we're a big university and we had over 70 people sign up. So we had been hoping for a few more. Um, and I think there's a range of reasons why we didn't get the attendance that we wanted to. Um, some of it was about the format and the timing. Some of it was really local specific and quite unlucky in the open access week, which we sort of decided to use as the right time to do this. Also coincided with a few councils um, half terms. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our staff were off on holiday. It also coincided with the strike earlier the week. So a lot of people <laughs> were overwhelmed by emails. So I think, <coughs> and you know, it being Manchester and in the Northwest of England, it coincided with a lot of rain, but you know, that's always <laughs> gonna be the case. There's not a lot we can do about that, but we're hoping that next time there won't be a strike and that will hopefully up our attendance. So this was really our first attempt. It was the first attempt to do anything like this at Manchester. Um, so whilst we're a little bit disappointed with the numbers, I think it's still very positive. So what are we doing next? Um, we're going to do a slightly shorter session. We did a half day session, which I think was maybe a bit ambitious to start. So we're learning a lesson there. Um, we took the open access week theme open in order to, which really gave speakers a lot to work on. But I think it also made it quite a difficult marketing exercise for our marketing team because it's quite a broad theme. Um, and the other thing, and this is something that I'm particularly keen on doing, Manchester's, I think, quite unusual in that it has three strategic goals around research, around teaching, but also around social responsibility. So it puts social responsibility as a really sort of high priority across the university. And I think something where we have a lot of potential is um, using that. And so using the whole idea of social responsibility and practicing your research openly as a way to be a socially responsible researcher, as a way to engage uh, people. So yes, that's our sort of our first stab at an open research forum. Um, we're hoping to do the next event in possibly February to time with uh, Love Data Week. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you'll hear more if if that one goes well. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. Are there any questions? Thank you very much, Rosie. Good talk. Uh, any questions for Rosie? Thank you. Then we for you. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh. Oh, nice one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Rosie, it's maybe quite a low level question. I don't mean it to be negative, but do you think there's a bit of a risk with those of us who are non researchers? Uh, who know, you know how research is done, but haven't actually done it to, let's say, you know, postdoc level? Um, there's a risk of teaching people to suck eggs when you're teaching them certain techniques about working with files and so forth. I mean, I can see that in my own organisation, mm -hmm. that we wouldn't have any credibility as a, as a, as a, as a support group there. Are, are we need to work in a different way. Have you ever encountered that kind of negative um, feedback, you know, and had to try something again, fit the key in a different yeah. lock or take a different key? And, um. you know? Occasionally, I think most researchers actually think of a reminder of something really basic that they know about but they don't necessarily do is quite useful. But this was why with this event we had, there was one person from the library who facilitated something in Altmetric, but other than that, we didn't have any librarians talking. We had it all researcher-led, yeah. researchers really determining what they wanted to talk about. We identified individuals who we thought would be good speakers and who we knew had some interest in this area, but we then left it totally up to them what they wanted to talk about. And that sort of showed in the range of talks, which some were about data and data reuse, and that was interesting because not all the audience knew about that. Um, but some were also around blogging and public engagement. So I think that's why this kind of event is interesting in that giving researchers <coughs> control and just saying we'll facilitate and provide coffee, basically, um, mm. can be an effective way of talking to them. Sure. So, so really the takeaway is don't, don't uh, stress yourself by trying to feel you're going into acquiring skills you feel you don't have from 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 a zero base instead just uh, play to everyone's strengths and uh, the most authoritative thing is from for researchers to receive this kind of advice from their peers so it's kind of yeah. kind of caught not taught I suppose is what I'm saying yeah I think definitely receiving it from peers um, is definitely yeah. a better way of of getting that engagement and, and again I think the personal story was quite important we actually made the whole event slide free which didn't go down well with all our speakers, but did really mm. challenge them to actually think about their narratives. And instead of producing the same set of slides that they do every week, it made them um, 
think about what they want to say and really tailor it to the audience, which was quite interesting. Thank you. Any other questions for the room today? <laughs> oh boy, where am I going next? Okay. Thank you. Um, I just had. I just wanted to kind of echo what we just what's just been said about um, the libraries being the facilitator and handing the baton, or if you can see it as that, back over to the researchers. And then I think that feeds on from what Hardy was saying this morning about the librarians being uh, a bit more um, integrated rather than explicitly running a session. I thought that was great. Um, my uh, kind of contribution really is just about your attendance mm. issue. I think that's kind of a thing that we've struggled with before. I work at the University of Derby. Um, we've run some great events, but we, our campuses are so broad that across different sites, hard to get people along to them. We um, tend to catch the people that do the talks. And for Open Access Week, we did interviews with them mm. um, on, a, on a YouTube playlist. And we found that the, you know, the number of views on those um, videos have been really, really high. Um, and I really like your Q&A on the stage idea. I mean, if that had been captured maybe with your learning technologists or your marketing mm. team to capture that, that might really help to give it some legs because it's, it's helped yeah. with us. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good idea. I think that is something we're thinking about for next time is, is filming and, mm. and written outputs afterwards. Um, mm. So, yeah. yeah cool. Thank you. Lucy, you had a question. Would you like to ask it? I did. Oh, gosh. Oh. So one of the challenges that uh, we find in Cambridge is uh, the communication kind of roots, mm -hmm. how you communicate with researchers, how you get your message out, how you invite people to communicate with you. Um, at events, you get a lot of the same people turning up, even if you get more people sign up in the first place. So for this um, Open Research Forum, it sounds really exciting having the speakers not being librarians. Did you find that that increased the number of new faces that you saw? And how, like, what were your communication methods to get um, the message out? So there was sort of, well, yeah, there's two things. One, having the speakers as, as mostly being researchers meant that we could lean on them a bit to put it out through their networks. Mm -hmm. um, and there were certainly quite a few of the speakers had dragged someone from their department along, which is quite <laughs> nice. Um, and I think we could have done more on that, actually. I think that's something we definitely, one of our lessons learned was we need to use the speakers to get into their departments. Um, I'll also say something that is probably not going to be popular with people from Cambridge in that because we're one centralised library and we have a team of academic engagement librarians, we just kind of go to that team and say, can you put this out on departmental mailing, mailing lists? Um, and that goes well. But I do think trying to get people who aren't librarians to send the message out is quite important because um, certainly for us, most of our librarians are quite slow, closely associated with teaching mm. and um, to a certain extent with open access, but they're certainly not people that researchers would think about for data management necessarily. So um, yeah, we, we use social media, we use some direct um, sort of going to people, direct approaches and, and leaning on our speakers to push out through their networks and just trying to find anyone in a department who would send the message out basically. So Thanks. yeah, I think that sort of answers your question. That's great. Well, thank you very much.